Last time on Kerbal Space Program. We're going to strap it to a rocket, go up, and then soft land it as well as we can. And now, a moderately predictable conclusion. Five, four, three, two, one. We are a go. The lander is being carried to its ultimate destination of somewhere up there. So the fuel is burning down fairly slowly, but I don't really want to go all that high. So we're going to turn this way, kind of inland a bit, so we don't go too high. And we can get over here to this kind of flat plane. Uh, I probably should have reduced the fuel in the SRB here, because now we're going really quite high and really quite fast and really quite far inland. Oh dearie me. Yep, here we go. It actually seems to be naturally tilting us downwards again as well, which might seem like it's good for our plan here to not get too high, but also we're going to be piling directly into, a gr into the ground with a SRB attached to us. Yep, it that is, that is what's happening now. Oh god, stop. Also, take some science. Yeah, sure. We're going to have to separate. <laughs> okay, three kilometers. It's, it's not going to burn out, is it? Okay, I'm separating. Separating again. Burning the engines. Burning the engines and turning as hard as I can. And nothing is happening. Nothing is happening. Nothing is happening. Okay. Welp. Um. Oh, ha, ha. <gasps> Maybe. Maybe, maybe, no, maybe not, S certainly, very much not. Oh dear. <laughs> oh, there goes the SRB. <laughs> uh, well, that went about as well as expected, if I'm totally honest. How did that happen? Uh, shall we try again, this time with just under half fuel? It uh, might help us out substantially with not diving directly into the ground and making a big crater rather than great scientific leaps forwards. Forwards. That wasn't proper English, was it really? So still going quite high, of course, I did misunder underestimate it, of course, and did misunderstand it, because you obviously take off a lot faster if you have less weight in the tank, but there we go, we have flamed out, and this time we're not piling into the ground at several hundred meters per second. Oh my goodness, wow. That was <laughs> unnecessarily violent, wow. There you go. The temperature has dropped incredibly quickly, it's already minus 35 at this altitude. A little bit of science for that. It might might make some difference. Uh, I hardly doubt it. And here we come. We are on our way in. I'm going to activate the liquid engines. They're burning. I didn't want that at all. just want to drop until we're at a fairly low altitude because here we obviously have the atmospheric effect which isn't simulated of the moon at all. However, what makes up for it is that our engines run at a lower efficiency in the atmosphere. So, sort of makes up for it a, a bit there, I, I guess. Now I think about it, this isn't really anything like a moon landing, because a moon landing, what you often want to do is come in as low as possible, and then just stop dead and drop from a bit of an al altitude. The higher you drop from... Uh, the more energy you waste just fighting gravity. Is that our solid rocket booster there as well that we're just going to fly past? Yes, it is. Um, I don't know what sort of trajectory that's on, and hopefully it's not going to land on our head, which would be most unfortunate. We're going to begin a light burn. Hundred and fifty meters in altitude, traveling at about hundred meters per second. I'm going to burn a bit harder, quite substantially harder actually, because I may have left this a bit too late. Uh-oh. 
80 meters per second, 700 meters. We can begin burning hard, burn hard, burn hard. SRB is flying past us at this time. 450 meters, 50 meters per second. Less than 50 meters per second. Our SRB is dropping very quickly. Look at that. Down it goes. Oh god, we're still going at four. Oh, blimey, explosions. Explosions everything. Tracking the retrograde there. 25 meters per second. 100 meters. Uh, 130 odd meters. Uh, 13, throttling down a little bit. 11 meters per second. 10 meters per second. 9, 90. Okay, okay. About 10 seconds until we touch down. Boop. There you go. Bounced a little bit, but we landed safely from over six kilometers in altitude. We, <laughs> in a rather satisfying fashion, managed to witness the drop of that SRB onto the ground there. It's probably made a massive crater, a massive mess, but... Um, so now we've shown that this works moderately well, actually fairly surprisingly well, I've come about and I've begun to put some more things on it, rearrange some other things, put these batteries, this light and then some scientific experiments on it uh, to prepare it for a possible future actual space mission. I've chosen to call it the Utopia 3, so it will of course be the third installment of the Utopia project uh, directly preceding Utopia 2, which we need to build right now. The Utopia 2. Here we go. Five, four, three, two, one. We have ignition, we have separation, and we have a liftoff. There we are, safely in a stable orbit. 82,000 meters by 81,000 meters. Bit high, really, for what we need to do, seeing as we're going to be burning into a lunar encounter, but whatever, it's how it turned out. It was a, an interesting launch, to say the least. It was very successful. I think it's probably one of the most efficient launches that I've ever done. But it was, it was interesting, a little bit... A little bit shaky. I feel like the, the reaction control system... No, sorry, the reaction wheels up here added a bit too much torque to the rocket. And then I nearly pooped myself when we came to our maneuver node because I fast-forwarded too much. But nonetheless, we're in orbit now! And I have plotted a maneuver node to the moon. Uh, it is actually on the next orbit. It's one orbit in front. We could go pretty much right now but uh, you know we've got to we've got to test the communications and stuff and make sure that all of the spacecraft is still working properly after launch you know in low earth orbit we can at least go and fix it but uh, or or rather i just want to get pretty shots like this
there we are. Now that we are well on the way to the moon, I suppose it is also time now to unfurl all of our communication arrays. Did that work? Extend. There you go. There you go. Cool. <laughs> and take a quick look over our spacecraft here. It's pretty sweet. It's pretty sweet. Got a lot more guff than it really needs and I suppose I should go ahead and explain what this spacecraft actually is. So this here is the Utopia 2, the of course the predecessor to our first mission which successfully orbited the moon. Uh, the original idea of that mission was to kind of get as close to a circular orbit around the moon as possible, but evidence just here that certainly didn't happen. Now that we have developed the technology and we know that we can successfully soft land using rocket engines alone, I have decided that the Utopia 2 shall be a mission to fly as close as it as we possibly can to the moon surface, hopefully without making contact, as that would be quite destructive. Maybe maybe get within sort of two kilometers. That's generally what's considered a close call in terms of orbital space. But you know, we'll we'll see how low we can go, you know, it's it's gonna be a bit like the old um bloody hell, I can't remember what that's called, where you go under the pole in a weird way. I don't remember what that's called. Oh my goodness, it's just totally gone. I just cannot remember what that's called. My goodness. But anyway, we're taking advantage of the uh, the fuel duct and this little engine that we have here. I think it ended up looking fairly cool. Um, this is kind of pointless. I put the light on there, which may seem kind of pointless, but I think I imagine it as a sort of a camera, an eye, a way of seeing the scientists to actually see what the spacecraft sees, you see? <laughs> and then I've got about three antenna on here, including this new one. And these aren't exactly cheap, so I'm not entirely sure why I did this. The only reason I can really think of is because it looks cool. Now, we've already gone through a good, at least, maybe one and a half eighth. I'm sure there's a better way of saying that, but whatever. But I know from my totally legitimate testing that this spacecraft should have a decent amount of fuel to at least get us into orbit around the moon and then do a few, few maneuvers further than that. Here we come. The moon is approaching. Oh, for the first time we've actually done a decent job with the inclination here and that's a good thing for this mission. Kind of the secondary objective, although really primary objective, is to look for a decent landing site on the moon and so therefore it wants to land like, it wants to go as low as possible over the equator to make it easiest to land. Although, I guess if you're not bringing it back, it doesn't really need to go over the equator. But, I'm sure there's some sort of reason for it. I'm sure. <laughs> Here we go. So, this is a maneuver that will slow us down, bring us into orbit, and then bring us within 10 kilometers, maybe we go a little bit lower, right at the, the sunrise terminator of the moon just there, which I feel like will be important. So we'll come in, we'll slow down, and we'll go closer to the moon within 10 kilometers, and then I guess we can slow down here, or we'll make a decision what we want to do when we get there. Oh man. <laughs> this, this shot will never, ever get old, I swear. Just the moon slowly approaching as we drift towards it. <laughs> oh? Oh. Oh. Ooh, we can get a whole point eight science. Ooh. <laughs> Whoop. Okay, so the original idea of having the reaction wheel here was so when we're flying really low, if we need to like suddenly turn and f flip upward so we can burn away from the surface to avoid a, a crash, that you know, we can spin really quickly with a reaction wheel. However, it appears that we spin really quite quickly. <laughs> so for the first time in this series, we're actually going to use fine control. You see down in the bottom corner there, the indicators for our roll, yaw and pitch have turned blue. That means that they're much less, much less sensitive. It takes more of a, more of a push to get you moving, you see. That reaction wheel may, may be a little bit extraneous. It's like a third bollock. <laughs> and oh, oh god, that's... Yeah, the the reaction wheels actually make us able to stay in a straight line because it's 
a little bit asymmetric is this uh, is this design here oh look at that <laughs> look at that oh that's pretty sweet oh bugger yeah oh god <laughs> most of the altitude of within the craters is about a kilometer above the lowest point so that would be almost certain death for us I think there you go okay five kilometers that's a bit more reasonable that's already unnervingly close. I mean, I can't really see. That's like a, a crater wall just there, which, will, you know, obviously be the highest points. Kind of the highest points on the moon. And we're sailing right over those. Uh, there may be some more coming up. We've still got a long way to fall, I think. I feel like that mountain there is actually higher than we are. Oh, God. Um, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. These are some really big bloody mountains. I don't want to be going down anymore. Possibly should have mentioned this, and I, I am a massive wussy. But look at look at this mountain here that you can see in the sun. We are already incredibly close to the surface here. Uh, we may have made so, so many mistakes. Yep, that is a mountain that is right there. Oh, I'm not so sure about this. Okay, we are going up though. So I think we'll go over it. Look how close we are. Look at Look how mental these mountains are. Oh god! Yeah, they look close. I can't actually tell how close we are. Yeah, there's not enough depth to really be able to get an idea of how close we are there, but it seems incredibly close. But we have cleared that mountain range. Oh, I always love doing this. I've, I've done this many times before in different playthroughs of the game, you see, and I always love just flying really low over the moon's surface. It's brilliant. So what I'm going to do here is lower the, the Apple app so we actually fly a lot lower over the moon. Another thing we can do now is actually pushed downwards. We've got kind of planes coming out here, so I, I'm not too worried. I'm going to keep it kind of above above five kilometers for now. So there we go. We're now at a stable sort of sort of six kilometer in altitude, right the way around. And this may be a good altitude. I want to see how we go. Look at this. This is amazing. And we can indeed still time warp as well. At least a bit. Let's point upwards for multiple reasons. Firstly, we can point towards the sun. And also, we'll be able to fire away from the surface should we get too close. Or should I wuss out, which is the more likely option, I think. This kind of looked like a mount. Oh, that's a mountain. Oh, God. This looks pretty. Some very flat areas just here. Although it's 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 sometimes difficult to actually tell how flat an area is. You can see this, it looks like a large hill right in the middle of the crater here. Oh, oh. And here's our first Kerbin rise. Ah, look at that. That's a very close mountain that we're coming over as well. Oh, this is so silly, but so fun and so awesome. Look how low we are. I love it. <laughs> I love it. Before they changed the surface of the moon, it was fairly easy to find a good landing spot. But I, I really do think that I prefer it like it is now. We're coming up over some, some decent areas here. Yeah. This is nice. We have been engulfed by darkness. And even the planets are fading from view beyond the moon's horizon. Oh no, Kerbin's still up there, we can still see that. So the scientists can still see what we see. We are very close to the moon, but I, I, I doubt much can be seen right now. We do have a light shining, I believe. Yep, there it is. So anything on the surface can see us quite clearly. No, no, there's nothing on the surface. It's the frickin' moon, it's an airless and lifeless rock. <laughs> There's no, not going to be anyone down there. Or oh, will there. Next time we come to these mountains, I do believe that we will be in sunshine. So we will actually be able to see what's going on. Here they come. Oh yes. <laughs> Here they come. I remember this. Uh-huh. Here we come. I think we must have an interesting inclination because we went on the opposite side of that mountain, I swear. But nonetheless, this looks cool as heck. I think on the next orbit we may actually be in daytime, in, in sunlight when we come across this. 
Look at that. It's amazing. Oh man, look how quickly we're going. We, we're not time warping at all, and look how fast the ground is going out beneath us here. It's amazing. Oh god. So this time I have made a slight course correction. Well, when I say correction, a course adjustment so that we come a little bit closer. You see here, within five kilometers. So we're going down at five meters per second, but this just means that I have to keep an extra an extra eye on the on the horizon here to make sure that we're not going to dash ourselves across the surface of the moon. Our mission is not to make a big hole. Our mission is to find a good place for probably someone else to come and make a big hole. Oh. <laughs> yeah, and that's a, that's a little bit of a constraining feature as well, is that you can't warp f at all under five kilometers, so... Physical time warp. Oh yeah. Scary looking mountain. Oh no. What are we going to call you, scary looking mountain? Megalith, I think. Sounds like a metal band from the late 90s. Are we going up yet? Because this looks remarkably close. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. We are going up, but is that close? I can't tell. There's not enough depth perception. It's dark. Oh shit. I can't tell how close we are. I'm I'm panicking. I'm panicking. I'm panicking. I'm panicking. I'm panicking. Yep, get that. <laughs> oh my god. Well, we're still very close, so I feel like we would have been incredibly close there. Um, no. Well, if we continue on this trajectory, we're going to crash. Right. <laughs> well, now I've wet myself, I guess the be best next course of action would probably be in go to go in and get some new trousers and also underpants. So, thank you so very much for watching. My name is Aiden, and I will see you when I see you. Goodbye. Not sure about this ridge just here. We're not going down, but we're also not going up. You know what? I'm I'm not a wuss. I'm gonna prove them all wrong. I'm not a wuss and I'm not stupid. This is gonna be awesome. We're gonna fly really, really low over this mountain. It's gonna be glorious. Although it does kind of just look like a big wall. Um 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 I don't know. <gasps> yeah, that was low.